Well, good morning. This is Chabix Racing, and I'm going to make a video on what happens if your Proxmox boot disk fails, because that happened to me over the weekend. And it'd be really stressful, especially if you don't have proper backups like me. I don't have proper backups in place um, of the virtual desktops because I have them all in a RAID 10, and I'm like, okay one fails, I can just pop in a new disk. Well, in this case, what happens if the hypervisor fails? And that's not really a fun scenario. Luckily, there are plenty of options of getting this back. Um, but basically, this is my exact error. I, I didn't really capture it, but it, it'll, it'll be on your screen if you look on your server. They'll say, hey, uh, it's not bootable. And I went round and round and round on this one. Uh, I tried to recover it. It's like the disk itself. It's it was a USB drive and it's just shot. Um, so basically, this video is to talk about nine stay calm steps um, to recovering your Proxmox V VE server. Um, this is uh, this is what it looked like my my server before. I had all these VMs on it, um, and unfortunately, when you lose the um, hypervisor boot disk, the information about the virtual desktops is is on that boot disk. Uh, the VMs themselves are are in the storage, so like you you they're still there. All the disks are still there, but basically, like you have to reinstall Proxmox into a new boot drive instance, get that started, and then re-import your storage, and then make your virtual uh, machines again, and then reconfigure all of them. And it really kind of depends on your setup and how you have your virtual desktop set up, but uh, it could be a little cumbersome. <clears throat> so there's a great guy this guy has. Um, Basically, he has a very similar problem. Uh, he rebuilt the server, the boot just died. Um, but um, basically, I'll, I'll have a link to this and you'll be able to look at it. But um, I, in my case, so his first step is decide if it's the drive or the system. Basically, in my case, it was uh, the drive um, because I was adding RAM to the system. And uh, basically, what I think is the USB drive died at some point uh, in the last 90 days. Um, but of course, you wouldn't know that unless you rebooted. Uh, so I shut down everything properly and added um, a bunch more RAM. I bumped my RAM up to like 60 more gigs, which is very useful. Uh, and um, I came to the screen, basically. So... Uh, and I was like, well, I got to be able to try to recover this thing. I'll try to get those VM files off and, you know, make my life easier. Of course, that's not going to be possible. Um, I mean, with some data intelligent software, maybe you might be able to recover that information. But I don't have that at my disposal. Uh, so basically, I got a new USB stick. I installed Proxmox version uh, 8 on a, another USB drive. And I put another USB stick in. Uh, and I reinstalled Proxmox version 8. Um, takes a little time, uh, and then you'll come up to um, basically a blank server, and you won't have your storage. Uh, but fear not, it is there. Um, and this guy, in his um, his guide, shows you how to re-add the storage. It's really easy. Um, so we'll go down to that section. Uh, he talks about if you have like special network setups or anything. I didn't have any of that. Um, I didn't. I didn't have any. Um, yeah, import local storage. So basically, the one thing is you you got to be able to remember what your storage name is because you'll be able to easily re-import that into your Proxmox, uh, your new instance. And so. Luckily, I remembered that I named them all store-01, store-02. So I was able to go on the Proxmox instance, my ZFS and, um, oh, sorry. I was going to go to shell and um, 
add all that by just typing zpool import store one it imported store two it imported and then i was able to um, look at that that the discs themselves oh everything looks fine which is really awesome so i didn't lose anything um, and then uh, you can list all of all the discs that are on those two storage drives um, I did have another, uh, like an ISO drive that I stored ISOs on, um, but I ended up going a different direction on that, so I did, it didn't import that. <clears throat> the only problem is with this is um, when you add a new virtual desktop, you can't just import the disk. You have to do a little finagling, basically. Um, but one more thing uh, to to go, go into real quick um, is these disks here won't show up until you go over to your data center and add them again. Um, so there's ZFS and I had to uh, add these again and give them IDs and then they showed up. Um, but they, So they were imported on the node that itself but the the data center tab, it, they did not show up. Um, so just remember if you go, if you have to do this and you're watching this video, um, you'll import them. They'll be there. They'll be in your uh, hypervisor instance, uh, but they won't show up over here until you run uh, what I was showing you where you had to add the storage on there. <clears throat> All right, so without further ado, let's talk about basically how you would recover one of these virtual desktops. Uh, and so we'll go back to my reference. Luckily, I was able to take a screenshot of this because uh, basically it this is all it looks like. Like you don't, you're not going to know what corresponds to what unless you <laughs> have the names here, um, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, but it's doable. Um, you can do it. It's just going to be a pain in the butt for you, like more work. So I was lucky to be able to take the screen cap um, of the screen um, in place. And now I have like kind of a reference. Um, so say I want to uh, re-import one of my sandboxes, uh, 06. I can see disk 06. Let me zoom in for you. Here, I'll be able to easily add that in. Um, so one of the things I'll kind of go over, uh, I was trying to figure out um, is like the best way to add these in without making them so really, really difficult. And so one way is you could just, um, just create a virtual desktop um, and give it the ID um, and give it the name that, uh, here, so it would be my um, Linux, right? I could do that. Um, I could tell it not to use media, um, tell it not to have a drive, uh, and just kind of import it that way. Uh, but I found uh, a little quicker way. So if you install um, WinSCP, uh, you could just basically duplicate one of these files here inside this drive, inside this folder. So you go to etc pev nodes proxmox 2 qeum server, and this is where all your configs for all your virtual desktops live. Um, and so you could literally just duplicate one of these guys. That's because it's powered on. Duplicate. There we go. Or not. Interesting. Okay it's the same name <laughs> all right fine we'll just copy copy and paste 
what do we say? Number six, VM six. All right. Um, so I created this one, and now you can see over here, um, a zero six VM just popped up. Uh, but so I've already kind of done a little like of the pre work here. Um, so I kind of I made a Notepad plus plus instance here. So we're we're gonna import this one here. It's on stores dash zero two. This is the name. that so now I'm gonna do this um, so now like if you use this here unused disk zero and you reference the disk that's on the storage you'll you'll create essentially you're creating this virtual machine and you're telling it that there's a disk it can use but it's not added to the instance uh, the other things you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to change the Mac address so it's not the same if you're copying you're gonna to have to change this if it's not the same. Change the the ID if it's not the same. Change the name. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the the cores of memory and all that uh, at this point. Uh, in my case, it's a Linux system, so I guess that points to uh, one two six. Uh, if it's Windows or another system, you'll have to adjust for that. Um, but basically, all I do is I save that now, <clears throat> and you'll see that this machine will got updated to sandbox Linux S01. And I'll look at the hardware and I see now there's that disk, disk six, oh, 1006. And all I gotta do is edit this and add it to the storage. And I can power this VM up now. Uh, so. Should be powering on. Uh oh, it's not powering on. Uh, oh. I didn't give it a proper value. Apparently. <laughs> I wonder what happens if I just get rid of it. If it just makes a new one. Yeah, it sure does. Well, there you go. Um, fear not. If you lose your Proxmox boot disk uh, and you have your storage intact, you'll be able to recover all your virtual machines. Uh, you're probably not going to be as lucky as me to have this reference of all the names and what they correspond to the IDs. Um, but rest assured, uh, it is possible to recover <laughs> your Proxmox server. All right. So thanks for watching. I know this is probably long drawn out and boring, but um, it's important, especially if you're like me, you have a lot of your shit coins on these VMs. And I, I do have some of the private keys backed up, but not all of them. Um, so lesson learned. Uh, I'm going to be looking into some backup solutions for these virtual desktops for sure after this.